so grateful for this privilege. I do not take it for granted. And I thank God for all the servants of God in the house. Uh, dear Kola, I don't know. Very few people minister in songs and I am touched the way I am when you minister. You carry something and God will preserve you in the name of Jesus. This generation celebrates you. God bless you. Thank you, choir. I feel like stealing you and carrying you to Nigeria. <laughs> Amen. As you have been told, I am Funke Felix Adejomo, 55 years old, and the only wife of Felix Remy Adejomo. A mother of four and a grandmother of six grandchildren. I'm grateful to the Lord, the privilege of preaching the gospel. God laid a word on my heart this morning. And since I woke up, I've been praying for myself using this word. And in the few minutes that I have, I want to share it with you. It's a prayer. The title of the message is a prayer. And it is, Lord, please lift my head. I thought somebody would say a bigger amen. Can you raise your right hand to God and tell him, Lord, please lift my head. Can you put that hand on your forehead and pray that prayer again? Lord, please lift my head. My foundational scripture is in the book of 2 Kings chapter 25. I want to read verses 27, 28. 29 and 30. Second Kings chapter 25, 27 to 30. And it came to pass in the 730th year of the captivity of Joachim, king of Judah, in the 12th month of the 720th day of the month, that even Merodach, king of Babylon, in the year that he began to reign, did lift up the head of Joachim, king of Judah, out of prison. And he spoke kindly to him and set his throne above the throne of the kings that were with him in Babylon and changed his prison garments and he did eat bread continually before him all the days of his life. And his allowance was a continual allowance given him of the king a daily rate for every day, all the days of his life. Life essentially is about the lifting of heads. God told me that in 2018, he's going to do some things. And one of them is that mothers will dance for joy. Many mothers will dance for joy. God also told me that in 2018, many heads will be lifted. And I've been praying since the year began using this scripture. Lord, please lift my head. Lift my husband's head. The more. Lift my, our children's heads. Lift our heads. Lift my grandchildren's heads. Now, listen, beloved. The head is the most important part of anybody of any human body. You can have a heart transplant and survive. God forbid, if your legs are amputated, it does not mean that's the end of life for you. You can lose hands and still be alive. But the head, there's no headless body anywhere. And as you run through the scriptures, you discover that Anytime God sends help, anytime God does something unusual for anybody and marks that person out, it is a result of the lifting of head. That is why the devil attacks the head. The head, the head. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 15, when God was given the verdict, God said, The seed shall bruise your head. You will only bruise the heels. If the heel is bruised, no problems. But the head. God is particular about the head. The devil is particular about the head. May God lift your head. Yeah. That your amen is making me angry. You don't understand what I'm saying. As the man in the house, you are the head. If your head is not lifted, you lose honor. You begin to beg for honor. You begin to beg your wife. You begin to do things you should not do as a man because your head is not lifted. When a man's head is lifted, things fall in place, into place. Two plus two becomes four. It is a matter of head. May Jehovah lift your head. 
Recently, Pastor Wally, I looked at my mates and I couldn't find my mates among my mates. It is the lifting of head. Don't mind my grandma. It's lifting of head. It's a serious matter. And I want you to make this a serious prayer point this year. I noticed you're talking about, about uncommon help, unusual help. It's one of the things God told me. In fact, in Canada two weeks ago, that was the message I preached. When God wants to help you, he sends about 10 different kinds of people into your life. I'm not speaking about that today. Oh Lord, please lift my head. You see here, evil Merodach lifted somebody's head. Now, when they, they say you are an evil man, it is bad enough. But when your first name is evil, you are truly evil. Evil Merodach, yes please. Evil everywhere he went. Evil, evil, evil. But he was the one God used. What does that suggest? This year, you will receive help from most unlikely places. People that do not like you will help you. They have helped you, they may look and say, What did I just do? What did I just do? But it's gone. The needle has passed before the thread is strangled. May God lift your head. <laughs> I don't have all the time, but let's go on this journey. It's a matter of the head. If you look at the head, that is why the set that is where the central nervous system is. The head controls everything. You look at the head, you have your eyes with which you see. I am standing here now, but my eyes are where the media people are. So, your eyes get to where you have not even got into. That was why God said to Abraham, look, as far as you can see, you are limited by what you see, and the eyes are on the head. So, when God lifts your head, your vision becomes brighter. Things your mates cannot see, you begin to see. You become a mystery that nobody can unravel. You become a question that nobody can answer. May Jehovah lift your head. Yeah. I've come this morning to do an apostolic work in this house. Whatever has stood against the lifting of your head, today we crush it by the cross. Yeah. I push you to the front. I command you to go forward. Policies will be changed to favor you. Anybody that will not help you will go and leave. In the name Jesus. Take your seat. Your mouth is on the head with which you speak to God and to man. With which you make pronouncements. With which your word becomes authority. So when your head is lifted, your word counts. They say we can't do nothing until he arrives. It's a matter of the head. That's where your brain is. You are able to think deep and think fast and think far. So when we talk about the lifting of heads, we are, we are talking about something serious. It affects your ministry, it affects your career, it affects your marriage, it affects your thinking ability. And you know it is thinkers that rule the world. That's the problem Africa has. Many do not think. Sometimes some of us need to decrease our prayer and spend time thinking. One hour, you are sitting, sit down and think. God is a thinker. He said in Genesis chapter 11, let's go down and scatter them because nobody can stop them from what they have imagined. Think. Many years ago, I sat down and I, and I, I thought, I said to myself, Some marriages are too common. I want to be different. Some women are just women. I want my mate to be scarce. Many people come, they leave, they have sex, they give birth to children, they cook food, they do this and that, and then they die. I said to myself, no! I will die as an institution. That's where the head is. Some of you talk too much instead of thinking. 
so much. Thinkers are rulers. Empty barrels make the loudest of noise. On the head you have the nose with which you smell. I think God is about to do something. So many people are blind to what God is doing. They can't even smell it when God is around. They dance where angels fear to tread. They take people for granted. They don't even know the helpers that God has sent to them. They can't smell it. Because they wear the same suit. Because they give the same high five. They cannot smell it. May God lift your head. Yeah. On your head you have the ears. With which you listen to warnings and to inspirations. Many people have been saved just because they had something. Many have been blessed just because they had something. This head that we're talking about is a serious matter. In Zechariah chapter 1 and verse number 18, beginning. Zechariah chapter 1 from verse 18. Then lifted up my eyes and saw, and behold, four horns. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, what be this? And he answered me, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. And the Lord showed me four cup. Penters. Then said I, what come this to do? And he said, these are the ones which have scattered Judah, so that no man did lift up his head. It's a head matter. The purpose of that attack is so that your head can be bowed. It's so that your head can go down. It's so that you will not make it. But the devil is a liar. Yeah. By reason of the cross, by reason of Calvary, whatever you have lost, there shall be restoration. Yeah. Hear me, beloved. Whatever you lack most, as I stand on this altar of God today, in 18 months' time, you will have most. Yeah. Sit down. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, after David killed Goliath, the Bible says David ran and took Goliath's sword cut his head. He didn't cut the hand. He cut the head. It's a head matter. For Samuel chapter 17. In, Ge in Genesis chapter 40 and verse 13. Genesis 40 verse 13. Joseph was interpreting the dream for the butler and the baker. He said, in three days shall Pharaoh lift thy head. This is the thy leg. Thy head. That by Genesis one of hands. Blessings are provoked and transferred by laying on of hands. The man crossed his hand. Let me pause to say this. He crossed the hand because <laughs> first bonds are not born, they are made. Psalm 89 and verse number 25. Thou hast made him thy firstborn. First bonds are not born, they are made. Cain was Adam's firstborn. It was Abel that prospered. Ishmael was <laughs> Abraham's firstborn. It was Isaac that prospered. Esau was, beg your pardon, yes, was, ja was Isaac's firstborn. It was Jacob that prospered. Even Jacob. Reuben was his firstborn. By himself in Genesis 33. Beg your pardon. Genesis 49. He cursed him. Reuben, Reuben, you are my firstborn. You are the beginning of my strength and the excellency of dignity. But thou shalt not excel. Thou shalt not prosper. Until his pastor, Moses, in Deuteronomy chapter 33, cancelled it. Simeon, let Simeon live. And let his men not be few. Then he moved on to Rebion. So sometimes when your fathers have placed a curse on you, locate your... That's why if you don't have a pastor, you will not have pasture. You will suffer. Because life is a fight. Is it that you are fighting or someone is fighting on your behalf? And there are battles you are not, you cannot handle. All this gallifanting and running around everywhere, every shush. <laughs> Mountain of Agape, you go there. Value of redeem, you are there. International Jesus is, uh, is coming again. You are there. Okay, Chukwu and Sons, Christian Center. You go there. What's wrong with you? Your head has become so confused because people have laid hands on you so badly. 
everywhere you are there. Stay! Psalm 92, it is only the planted that flourishes. The planted, there's no perfect church anywhere. No perfect pastor anywhere. Hebrews 5 tells us the best pastor is taken from among human beings. Are you perfect? All this writing of rubbish on the internet. What you cannot tell me face to face, don't write it anonymously on the internet. You are a coward. And you are abusing pastors and talking about rubbish. Dancing where angels fear to trade. No wonder you are, you are stranded. Is it grammar we are talking about here? It's grace. It's grace we are talking about here. And it does not concern you. Whoever God chooses, he has chosen. So his master, he stands or falls. Stop abusing pastors on the internet. Because judgment is loading. Do it, press up. Don't let it come to your house. You don't know what it takes to be a minister of the gospel. Yes, we have some bad eggs, but that does not mean everybody is bad. When God was taking them to the promised land, he said every day, go out and gather manna. On the Sabbath, they don't go. Some people still went. So, they are human beings. You find some people, God didn't call them. They flashed God. Hello, hello, God, call me. And after that, they started a shop, not a church. And they can take church money and do anything and sleep with anybody. But we still have the remnants that are expecting the coming of the master, the great shepherd. So don't, don't lump us up. And start writing rubbish. I say, don't pay tight. Who is the person that even said it? What value has that person added to you? That will not be determining how you spend your money. One day he will tell you when to sleep with your wife. Don't give them power to be telling you what to do. You look like what you look at. So if you don't want to look like them, stop looking at them. He crossed his hands. <clears throat> Joseph said, Daddy, don't do that. He said, in our family, first bonds don't prosper. Some of you are first bonds. Or some of you are second bonds and third bonds. You know how you are helping your, your, your seniors to pay their children's school fees. It's a curse. And if you're a first born, in case you don't know, there are battles. So you stand, you take your stand and continually take your place. Some of us, some first bonds had to die for us to become first bonds. I'm telling you. In Psalm 3 verse 3. Thou, O God, are the shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of my May God lift your head. Amen. And Jacob was blessing Joseph in Genesis 49, verse 20. He said, let it be on the head of Joseph. No wonder that boy became the head. Psalm 140, verse 7. O God, the Lord, the strength of my salvation. Psalm 140, verse 7. Thou hast covered my head in the day of battle. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse number 8. Thy, let thy head lack no oil. And let thy garment be always white. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse number 5. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 5. When the head is sick, the whole heart faints. It's a matter of the head. May God lift your head. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 51 verse 11. Everlasting joy shall be upon their head. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. These heads that I'm looking at today will wear special crowns. Hmm. Let's go back to that our scripture. A few more minutes, I'm done. That's 2 Kings chapter 25. Even Merodach lifted his head and took him out of prison. A prison is a confinement, limitation, inhibition, lack of freedom. You can be walking on the streets and yet you are in prison. You are in prison and imprisoned. Financially. When you eat what you see, not what you like. It's a, it's a form of financial imprisonment. When you really want to give God $1,000, but you don't have it. I've been there before. Your heart really desires. You see your mates, people that came to church, are, they were even born when you were, you were already a lecturer. You see them serving the Lord and giving. You see them changing their cars. It's financial impr imprisonment. When your wife is telling you as a man, I'm going out now to the office. So don't finish the beans. <laughs> and you have no choice but to. 
No, you are begging your wife. Please don't call the police. Or don't call. I will wash the clothes. I, I had a, a joke some time ago. This man had an argument with his wife. And then he said, get inside now, pack all your clothes. Just before he finished the statement, the lady's telephone rang. So she picked it up and put it on speaker. It was her father. Hello, sweetheart. I told you I'm leaving for Germany now. I'm already at the airport. I just want you to know I have transferred $200,000 to your account. Give $50,000 to your firstborn. Give $50,000 to your second. Give $50,000 to your husband. And then you take $50,000. I'll be back in two months. Is that fine? Or two weeks or whatever. Okay, I love you, sweetheart. Greet your husband. Bye. Pim. Uh -huh. What were you saying? The man said, I said, go inside now. Pack all your clothes. I want to wash them. May you not be a man like that. Moses yeah. says there are two kinds of husbands. A man of means and a mean man. Mean man. I prostrate for the wife because of what? In my village, they say you cannot be calling cow brother because you want to eat meat. <laughs> Who calls a cow? Brother cow. <laughs> and there are husbands calling cows brother. Because their heads are not lifted. That's why God brought me here today. May God lift your head. May you not serve your mates. May you not be at the mercy of your mockers. If you believe you shout a bigger amen. amen. Take your seat. Took him out of prison. Spiritual prison. Marital prison. There are women that are in prison today. Maritally. When a man does not treat you well, it's a prison. That marriage is a prison. The man treats you as if you are a piece of, of furniture. Shouts at you. He prefers his mother to you. You are in so much disfavor. He treats you as if you were the one that begged him to marry you. He looks at you and says, it's only girls you have. You talk to him. He says, yes, yes. You too, you know you are in prison. It's not a marriage. It's marital prison. I've been married almost 34 years. My husband still carries me, puts me on his back and swings me around. We just returned from Seychelles. We spent Christmas there. Inside the yacht. Calabo Shataya. Life is sweet. May you not suffer. What are we talking about here? And the man does not place value on you, doesn't put any value on you, talks to you, disgraces you in the presence of everybody, raises his hand to beat you in the presence of your children. That's, that's an animal. And I don't know why some of you women stay in such relationships. Last year, I started a home for abused women, women that are in abusive relationships. We have criminologists, we have, you know, counselors and all that. Somebody was interviewed. Hear what she said. Anytime there was any argument, my husband would tell me, kneel down there, you goat. And she would kneel down for 15 minutes. Close your eyes and raise your hand. After 15 minutes, stand up. Go to the kitchen and get something for me. And when you are done, clean up. I'll meet you in the bedroom. That's one of the reasons why I put that message in House on the Rock. Your husband asked you for money. I said, hey, hey, you went to kill me. I said, woman, hear me. If the totality of your financial life Depends on your husband. You are a colossal misfit. A disgrace to womanhood. You can't give offering until you take permission from your husband. You cannot buy bra. You can't buy pants. You cannot look at somebody in church and bless the person until your husband has given you permission because it's not your money. Our money is different from my money. And no man wants a liability around him anymore. 21st century husbands are not like the 19th century husband. That you must sit down. <laughs> Hear me, these days, we 21st century wives, we do not wait for our husbands to give us money before we cook. If you are still doing that, you are the only one remaining in that class. We left. We have left. What we do is, whether the man gives money or not, we cook. The man comes home, we massage him. He eats. Then we use time to collect the money back. Style. No 
fighting. We just use style. And the man gives us why you are, you know, touching his head and everything and giving him the, the list. <laughs> Ministerial prison. I don't have the time to go into all these. Ministerial prison. People just live for no reason in your life. People that should have helped you. Tongues of men just make them frustrated and then they leave. God sent people. I'm not speaking about that today. We have Holy Ghost and then we have people ghost. God told me one day there is no strong man anywhere, only helped people. Nobody is strong. Look at anybody that is strong today. Look at anybody that is making his mark today. Begin with our great Baba Gio. He's a product of help. God just plants people around you to help you, to simplify your assignment and amplify your life. That's it. Stretch your two hands to God as I'm stretching my own. May God send you divine helpers. When it is from God, he won't use it against you. So, may God send you helpers that are truly God sent. that we collaborate with you to make your journey of life simpler and faster. May God bring them your way in the name of Jesus. Touch your body with that prayer. I hug myself. I receive the help from the north, the south, the east and the west. We are I get to help. We just be waiting for me. They will just be looking for me to help me in the name of Jesus. Take your seat. Some people are in prison by reason of their extended family members. They just hate you. That's what I call household enmity. Oh my God, my time is up. <laughs> so sorry. I need to. I need to close. <laughs> A few more minutes. That's why. Okay. Are <laughs> Thank you. Their extended family members. They just hate you. Jealous relations. They don't know how you are struggling. But because you don't show it on your face, they think everything is fine. And when they can't take it on you, they take it out on your wife. Yeah, the reason why our brother is not taking a good care of us. May God deliver you from them. Yeah. Let's move on. The Bible says, he took him out of prison and spoke kindly to him. Now, beloved, hear me. Words are food. When Elijah ate the food that Jezebel prepared, he forgot his calling. That was why when the angel met him, the angel said, you have eaten one food, but you need to eat for the journey is far. Words are food. When a wife looks at the husband and feeds him with negative words, look at you. I compare you with Pastor Wally. Look at what you are. See your life. Whether you like it or not, the man is eating. And it will affect him. I don't even know what is following you. It followed you from Nambi, Namibia. It, when you went to Kenya, it followed you. Now you are in, uh, it's followed you. Look at you. You are saying it. The man is eating. Same thing when the man tells the, the wife. I don't even know how fat. Look at how fat you are. Can't you look, look at yourself in the mirror? Instead of you to say, sweetheart, can we go to the gym together? She gets the message. Or you look at your children, you call them all kinds of names. What, what kind of hair did you even bring to this world? What's wrong with you? Did you not see those girls that read the, the, the announcements? When we're talking to you, you'll be, you'll be stammering. 25 years to come, that girl remembers. Or you stood up one day, you were going because you are so slim. Somebody looks at you in class and says, Parallelogram. You won't for, forget. <laughs> you won't forget. Words are food. Spoke kindly to him. That's why you do, you do not forget the people that spoke well to you. Women in particular, when you look at her and say, you're beautiful. She's thinking. <laughs> Even if she's ugly, she's thinking. Words. Speak good words. Speak kindly to people around you. I hardly pass a woman without making a comment. Ah, oh, you're beautiful. Oh, I love your heart. Oh, I love this. 
Because who knows when last did she hear that? Don't be deceived by the makeup. It's makeup parties that change us like this. So some of you, you don't know what people go through. Spoke kindly to him. And the Bible says, he changed his garments. And this is what God said to me as I was coming to church this morning. Status will be changed. Yeah. Immigration status. Yeah. Marital status. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever is your status. God is changing it for the better. Yeah. That your amen is not good enough. Yeah. Status. Just key in. It's not about me. It's beyond me. This word is beyond me. Just key in. Status is changing. He changed his garment. Garment is very important. Please sit down. Garment is very important. Very important. When Rebecca wanted Jacob to receive the blessing. She put a garment on Jacob. In Genesis chapter 27. Put a garment. When Pharaoh sent for Joseph, he shaved because he remembered that culturally speaking, Egyptians do not like beards. Some of you, it is your garment. What you put on that has been putting off helpers. Some of you, the, the physical dresses you wear, how can you as a woman not dress well? I tell your husband, when your husband corrects you, 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 you saw me like that before you married me. Just leave me alone. 100 women are waiting to steal your husband from you. You cannot dress well. You cannot look good. When your pastor is coming, you quickly do your face. When, when pastor has gone, you tie a wrapper around your breast. The night wear you have is the one your grandmother left in her will. That's what you wear to give your husband. Garment! Change his garment. May God put on you the garment of favor. Yeah. I close with this. He said, give him allowance. Your own is coming. Yeah. Hell! Gave him allowance. From prison, lifted his head, changed his status, spoke kindly to him, gave him allowance. Allowance is not what you deserve. It's what they call in whatever... Ex gratia. Extra. But hear what he said. He said, forever. All his days. So, I have come this morning as a spiritual timekeeper to announce that from today until you see the Lord Jesus, you will not be poor. Amen. You will not go down. Amen. You will not know shame. It's a prophetic service. I didn't come here for any other thing. I just came to prophesy. From today, you will rise. Amen. From today, helpers will locate you. Amen. From today, your name will be mentioned in quarters that matter. Amen. May Jehovah bless you. Amen. May the God that called Pastor Wadi and put him and trusted this altar to him. May he cause men this week, this month, and this year to remember you for good. Amen the name of God the Father, Amen. God the Son, Amen. and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come on, celebrate your next level. Amen.